There it is. Your court. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 crimes that were solved in unexpected ways. They finally caught him. And it was just like the perfect way for Luca to go down. Luca was caught in an internet cafe because he couldn't stay away from his vanity. For this list, we're looking at various crimes that were unexpectedly solved through unconventional tactics or surprising revelations. Which of these stories do you find the most unbelievable? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, cat DNA. Cats don't just lounge in the sun all day, they also help solve crimes. In July of 2012, the remains of a 30-year-old man named David Guy were found in garbage bags on a Hampshire beach. Investigators found hair on Guy's remains and ran some tests. The hairs took them to a DNA catalog belonging to the University of Leicester. The weird thing is the catalog is for household cats. The DNA of the hair was traced to a cat belonging to Guy's neighbor, David Hilder. Fair you out of me, that thing goes. Hilder was tracked down by the authorities and, with the help of other incriminating evidence, was arrested and charged with Guy's death. Hilder was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to 12 years in prison. Number 9. Forensic Fingerprint After World War II, there was a bishop in the Romanian Orthodox Church in North America named Valerian Trifa, but then rumors began circulating that Trifa had a horrific past, namely that he was a former Nazi with the Iron Guard responsible for a program in Bucharest. Trifa was known not only for me, for if we will speak to everybody here in Romania or my generation, if you will ask him who was Trifa, it's the same thing if you will ask a German who was Streicher. The German government then handed over a postcard addressed to Heinrich Himmler that was allegedly written by Trifa. Trifa insisted that it did not come from him, but forensic scientists used a special type of laser that revealed Trifa's fingerprint on the postcard. Investigators now went to the document Trifa entered the U.S. with in 1950. At that time, he was fingerprinted. The thumbprint of that document was compared with the thumbprint taken from the postcard. It was a perfect match. The prints on both documents were the left thumbprint of Valerian Trifa. And just like that, a Nazi war criminal was identified. Trifa was kicked out of the US and found refuge in Portugal, and it was there that he died in 1987. Number eight, billboard handwriting. The case involving Florida killer Oba Chandler involved the first use of billboards in finding a criminal. On June 4, 1989, three female bodies were found floating in Tampa Bay. These were the bodies of Joan Rogers and her teenage daughters. They had been spending a day in Tampa and had asked Chandler for directions. He wrote directions down on a brochure and offered to give them a cruise of the bay on his personal boat later that night, where the crime occurred. Chandler's handwritten directions were plastered on billboards around Tampa and were eventually recognized by Chandler's neighbor. When I first initially met Mr. Chandler, he came across as, as not telling the truth and he wouldn't look you in the eye. And he just seemed shifty. Joanne rushed home and found the handwritten receipt for some work Chandler had done for her. As I was looking at it, my knees actually buckled. Authorities were provided with a work order that Chandler had written, and analysis proved a match. Chandler was found guilty and executed in 2011. Number seven, pollen cracks the case. It's amazing to think how far forensic science has come in the last century or so. Just try telling someone from the Victorian era, Sherlock Holmes accepted, that we would be using pollen of all things to crack murder cases. In 2002, two young girls named Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman went missing. For two weeks, police and locals desperately scoured the area. It was every parent's worst nightmare. There was a sense of real fear and dread in the village. People were starting to get more and more desperate as to what might have happened to these two little girls. 13 days later, a gamekeeper found their bodies in a ditch. Forensic ecologist Patricia Wiltshire was brought in and took some soil samples from the surrounding area. The pollen found in the soil matched the soil found on the leading suspect's car. And so that ultimately proved that it was his car that had been down the drove. And without him explaining how or why it had been there, 
the implication was obvious. Ian Huntley was officially linked to the scene of the crime, charged with the victim's deaths, and sentenced to life in prison. Number six, cold case cards. Back in the fall of 1979, a 24-year-old woman named Susan Schwartz was found dead in her home. The authorities immediately suspected the estranged husband of her best friend, a man named Greg Johnson. However, there wasn't enough evidence to implicate Johnson, and the trail went cold for decades. It was then that the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office had the idea to make playing cards out of cold cases. These cards made their way to a local prison, and an inmate recognized Susan's picture from the card. They directed authorities to an unidentified woman who admitted that her old boyfriend had killed Susan back in 79. Her ex-boyfriend was Greg Johnson. Johnson admitted to the crime and was sentenced to 24 years. Number five, unexpected reunion. I don't know if I should cry, if I should laugh, if I should smile, I don't know. Just, just go with it. Celeste Nurse experienced the most conflicting emotions imaginable between April 28th and 30th of 1997. On the 28th, her daughter Zephanie was born. Two days later, Zephanie was abducted from the hospital. Celeste was forced to return home without Zephanie, and no news was heard for the next 17 years. In the following years, the girl's parents had more children, but celebrated their oldest daughter's birthday every year. In that time, Celeste had another daughter named Cassidy. Cassidy started at a new school and found striking similarities with a student named Miche Solomon. Cassidy then arranged for her father to meet Miche, and he in turn contacted the authorities. They conducted a DNA test and found that Miche was actually the teenage Stephanie nurse. At the time when they presented to me that they were going to do the DNA test, uh, no way in my normal right mind of my 17 years of age at that time could I ever possibly think that this DNA test could actually be positive. Zephanie was reunited with her biological parents, and her abductor, Lavona Solomon, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. When you met Zephanie, for the first time officially knowing she is your daughter, what did you say, how did you feel? She came to me, she hugged me, and I grabbed her. I physically lashed onto her and I told her, you know, I knew from day one that you were my daughter. That's his fault. Number four, bugs. Vincent Brothers' complex alibi fell apart thanks to some simple bug splatter. Brothers' three children, wife and mother-in-law, were all killed on July 6, 2003. Airplane records proved that Brothers was in Ohio at the time of their deaths, having flown there from California to visit his brother. Investigators seized and analyzed his rental car and found a few suspicious things. Not only was the odometer nonsensically high, but insects found in the radiator were only found west of the Rockies. We're going, wow, we can actually do this. This is very cool. We can actually say, yes, the car had to be here. They then put the story together, realizing that brothers had flown to Ohio, rented a car, drove back to California, killed his family, and then drove back to Ohio. He was charged with their deaths and was sentenced to death. Number three, Lego clues. Authorities were left with a puzzling sight when investigating the death of 78-year-old Lucille Johnson. They found the elderly woman strangled within her own home, and littered throughout the living room was the unmistakable sight of colorful Lego bricks. The case occurred in 1991 and remained unsolved until 2014. Investigators then tested residue that was found under Johnson's fingernails and found a DNA match to an incarcerated man named John Sansing. Furthermore, the Lego bricks found in the house were scanned for fingerprints, and a match was made to Sansing's son. Authorities believe Sansing brought his son to the crime scene and let him play with Lego while daddy killed someone? Number two, NASA tech. NASA really can do it all, even crack a 20-year-old cold case. Back in 1991, a woman named Dawn Sanchez went missing. Investigators immediately pegged her boyfriend Bernardo Bass as being responsible, as Sanchez was last seen getting into his car. However, no one could find his car or even Sanchez's body. The case went cold for two decades, and then NASA stepped in. Authorities received a tip claiming that Bass's car was disassembled and buried in a vacant California lot. A NASA research team sent in a ground-penetrating robot that found car parts in the specified location, and excavators matched them to Bass's vehicle. The evidence helped implicate Bass in Sanchez's death and put
put them away for six years. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Golden State Killer's immense family tree. He was like a Hannibal Lecter, highly intelligent, highly sadistic, master manipulator. With his crimes spanning the years between 1974 and 1986, the Golden State Killer committed dozens of assaults and at least 13 killings. Adding to the horror were the man's taunting phone calls that were made to police. The killer got away with everything. That is, until 2018, in the invention of genetic genealogy. Authorities fed crime scene DNA into a genealogy service called GED Match. One of their features is that you could enter your own DNA to find long-lost family members. The service came back with thousands of hits, and they were able to craft a complex family tree that linked back to a man named Joseph D'Angelo. Using other clues and traditional investigative methods, the authorities were able to rule out everyone but D'Angelo. Police say the 72-year-old appeared surprised when they swarmed his home Tuesday evening. No incident, he didn't say it wasn't me or anything like that? No, uh, really no, really no conversation at all. After nearly 50 years of anonymity, the Golden State Killer was finally caught. It's crazy. After four decades of searching for this guy, it came down to testing a piece of tissue from his trash can outside. It was a 100% match to the Golden State Killer's DNA. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.